in the last video, we spoke about abstract classes at great length. So let's just flip directly back to over to our editor and start writing some code. Okay, so back inside of sorter, we're gonna first mark this as being an abstract class. So I'm gonna put in the abstract keyword right before class. You'll notice that we still have some errors inside of here. So the next thing we have to do is tell TypeScript that we eventually will have a definition for a compare, for swap, and for length. Eventually those will be defined. So to do so, inside of our class body, we're going to use the keyword abstract again. Abstract is used to mark certain methods as existing in the future or essentially implemented by some child class. So I'm gonna first tell TypeScript that compare will e eventually exist. So I'm gonna write out abstract compare, and then I'll write out the definition or the type spec for the compare method. So I'm gonna say that this thing is going to be called with some number that I'm going to refer to as left index. That's gonna be a number, right index, that's gonna be a number, and then it's going to eventually return a Boolean. Oop. Boolean like so. So you'll notice that now our error around compare has gone away. So again, take a look at the syntax here. We did not actually define a method or an actual implementation of a method. We just said we promise that when we eventually inherit from sorter, the child class will implement this method with this signature. So now we can repeat the same process for swap as well. I'll do abstract compare, left index number, right index number, and remember this one, oh, I just said compare, swap. There we go, swap, left index number, right index number, and that thing doesn't return anything, so we'll mark it as void. Next error went away, and now the last one we have to deal with is length. Now remember, length is a getter, so we're just going to treat it as though it were a simple property as opposed to the actual like getter function that we designed it as. So to indicate length, we'll say abstract length is going to be a number like so. So this means there will be a length property and it's going to be a number. And so now that we have provided all this information, TypeScript has enough information to actually analyze the sort method and the sorter class in isolation. So it can say, okay, well, let's like take a look at sort. Well, there's a reference to something called length. Does that property exist on this class? Oh, it doesn't exist yet, but it will at some point in time, and it's eventually going to be a number. So that's going to move on, blah, blah, blah. It's going to get to compare. It's going to say, hey, does compare exist? Oh, not yet, but like, here's the definition, and so on. And so now, if we save this file, once again, it is now up to the job of our numbers collection to make sure that we implement all of these different promises. We have to make sure that numbers collection has compare, swap, and length, and has the appropriate signatures. So back over here, for example, if I change compare, if I use a different name there and say like compare values or something like that, we'll very quickly get an error message that says, hey, you have a class here that does not correctly implement all the promised members from compare. So th this is saying again, sorter promised us, like TypeScript was promised, we would provide a actual implementation for compare, but that wasn't given inside of numbers collection. And that's why we are seeing the error there. So we have to change this back to compare and then the error goes away. All right, so that's it. That is abstract classes. So again, we are going to use them anytime that we want to provide some like reusable implementation of some function, but that function might depend upon some other functions that we cannot yet implement because these need to be functions that are very specific to the different child classes that we are trying to inherit this thing into. Remember, compare is going to be very different in our numbers collection versus the string collection and so on. So we are saying at some future point in time, we will have a customized version of compare or swap or length available to sorter. All right, so this looks good. So let's take a quick pause right here. When we come back in the next video, we're going to test out this code and then refactor our characters collection and linked list as well. So I'll see you in just a minute.